Hey everyone, my name is Chris and this is my husband Jose and we want to welcome you to I'm Here to Film Snob. To give you guys a little bit of a history on Jose, he went to film school, studied film theory and film history, ran a movie theater and was on several movie productions. But most importantly, he's extremely passionate about film. Anything from Fellini to Tarkovsky to Kurosawa, you name it, we probably own it. And if you haven't heard of Bellatar, we hope to change that on this channel. I want to thank my wife for making me sound more important than I actually am. But um, yes, that's the goal of this channel is we're going to review all kinds of films from new releases, Hollywood classics, cult classics, indie, foreign, action, horror. We won't even throw in a silent film or two. So we hope to cover the gamut of film history and show us uh, a little bit of our eclectic taste in movies. So today we're going to talk about a recent release on Netflix, Blonde, directed by Andrew Dominic and starring Ana de Armas. Here we go! So a lot has been leading up to the release of this movie and you know, we admire Andrew Dominic for sticking to his artistic vision and just, you know, and not trimming the movie actually or compromising anything that he had set out to make. So I think there was talk of behind the scenes pressure to trim some of the more sexually explicit scenes to avoid the NC-17 rating, but ultimately he prevailed, right? And was the NC-17 warranted? Um, what do you think? I don't think so. I don't know. I don't. I don't think there's anything crazy in there to warrant an NC-17. I mean, yeah. there's other films that have worse. It is worth noting that Chris and I got to see this movie on the big screen. We have one local landmark theater here that shows Netflix releases a week prior, and then concurrently with the release of the films on streaming. In that same theater, we got to see Quaron's Roma, Scorsese's The Irishman, and others. So that allows us to soak in the visuals a bit more than if we would have watched it maybe at home. On the TV. Another thing worth noting is the running time of the film at two hours and 45 minutes, which by modern standards is a little long. Mm -hmm. But for both of us, I don't think you never feel that time or you're bored or emotionally disconnected. All right, everyone, spoiler alert. So we're going to go over some scenes and um, details in the film that if you haven't seen it, it would definitely spoil it. So, so first, I want to start off with my favorite scene in the movie which like many movies is when you let two great actors go and play off each other and their dynamic shifts in the course of a single encapsulated scene. In this case, it is a scene apparently not based in real life between Adrian Brody playing Arthur Miller and DeArmas. And they're having an initial meeting, presumably in a diner or restaurant to discuss her auditioning for his play Magda. Mm -hmm. And in that scene, initially, you can tell Brody's character is reluctant to be meeting with her as he has in his mind already dismissed her and cornered her into her blonde bimbo persona, thinking she's going to use her sexuality to try and weasel herself into a serious play. But as the scene unravels, she progressively disarms him, referencing Chekhov's three sisters, and then further deciphering that the character of Magda did not show the proper response to a poem, not because she purposely dismissed the intentions of the poem, because in reality, she probably could not read English. Brody's character, Arthur Miller, is taken back at Marilyn's surprising death and only then realizes the layers hidden beneath the surface of Norma Jean. And here lies for me the crux of the movie. Norma Jean, through her Marilyn persona, was constantly seen solely as a blonde bimbo or sex symbol. But few got to realize the depth of character she had, and she was dismissed for trying to break out of that, which probably made her cling to that persona for better or worse. So in that scene and in that instant, Miller sees that other side of her and can see beyond the superficial beauty and see Norma Jean for the full person she was. The film starts with a prolonged sequence detailing Norma Jean's mother's mental breakdowns, delusions, and schizophrenia. Of particular note is a hellish ride up a highway in the middle of a fire where Norma Jean's mother tries to go through a police barricade and seeks refuge with her fictionalized father figure in the middle of this firestorm. As you mentioned, the metaphor with going into the fire it was almost surreal in that moment. It was it was incredible because after she came out of that fire, she did have a change. So this surreal ride is a perfect metaphor for a father figure Marilyn can never reach or find. 
and the harsh landscape she will have to navigate as an adult to get to the apex of Hollywood stardom. Cinematography wise, the film is expertly crafted by Chase Irving. Shifting between color sequences and high contrast black and white photography, I need to watch it again to see if the color sequences reflect the tonal state of mind for Marilyn or if they're purely stylistic choices to heighten what she's experiencing in the moment. Also, aspect ratios continually shift throughout the movie, going from standard academy ratio to widescreen compositions. Mm -hmm. And Urban uses slow motion, special digital effects photography, and just about every cinematic trick in the book to create a style that mirrors a central character's state of mind. Mm -hmm. Actually, I've done some research on possibly why he uses the different color shifts and aspect ratios is because they were actually based on pictures. So he wanted to bring these pictures to life. Hmm. So you use them as references to, yeah, to apparently. Just recreate them in a way? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Most of the sex scenes are actually well staged and blocked. And even the most sexually explicit scene is framed in such a way that it's really our imagination doing it a lot of the lifting, so to speak. And that ties into a larger conversation about some of the negative reviews of the movie. I mean, they're all over the media, the internet, YouTube, anywhere. Um, and like many things to the, in today's world, even movies have become political. So we wonder if some of those negative reviews are genuine, or are they just serving a larger political climate? So we're going out on a limb here and saying how certain things in the movie can be taken in a political context that could somehow maybe influence some of the negative reviews. And first and foremost, the film does not paint liberal and democratic hero John F. Kennedy in a good light. In fact, in the film's most sexually graphic scene, he's depicted as a lecherous, sexual predator who pretty much forces Marilyn to perform oral sex on him, which we witness in extreme close-up, while he dismissively takes calls while lying in bed and kind of just commanding her around. And then secondly, another point that has been repeatedly brought up is about Marilyn's talking fetus of her unborn child speaking and communicating with her, and even in a scene pleading not to be harmed. Recently, even Planned Parenthood released a statement how the film propagates anti-abortion propaganda by humanizing a talking fetus. Now, we don't want this review to be political. <clears throat> That's not the goal of this channel, but whether or not you believe John F. Kennedy was a saint is one thing. But the talking fetus is clearly an artistic choice by not Dominic, showing Marilyn's fragile state of mind. The fetus, in fact, ties into her fears of family-inherited mental illness and the motherly state she hopes to attain that might separate her from her sex symbol status. She's clinging to something to kind of disassociate her with this meat object she's become and wants to embrace this motherhood entity that she hasn't really been able to embrace. And in that communication with the talking fetus, I don't think is unnecessary. I mean, I mean, I don't think is unwarranted. There is a clear intent with these scenes and in my opinion are not gratuitous or meant to be propaganda in one way or another. They're an artistic choice by Dominic. And I think we forget that as viewers, that some movies are supposed to make you feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. That is their intention. And the filmmakers behind these movies, the ones that have at least a genuine intellectual pathos, don't do it just because to get kicks. They do it for you to question something deeper within yourself. And so you can ask yourself why it makes you feel uncomfortable. And I think in an era where we have realized watching someone like, let's say, I don't know, Britney Spears, Spears. Yeah. unravel and go off the deep end at some point in their life, is not entertainment that we should embrace or demand. At the same time, we have, might have become too sensitive to watching films that are the equivalent of getting punched in the gut. But those movies are earnest attempts at finding a character or artist navigating through their lows. Those is what makes powerful statements of human suffering. Mm -hmm. We can't go back and sanitize history for the sake of our emotional comfort and how we feel today in 2022. Yeah, and even in an interview, Adrian Brody stressed how important it was to continue to make films like this. You know, if we follow this cookie cutter of, of what films are, then you know, it no longer is an art. Yeah, I mean, some of the most powerful films in history are the tough ones, are the ones with heavy subject matters, things that we might see once and say, I never want to see that again, but it still lingers with you and it has an emotional impact on you mm -hmm. that you can't separate yeah. so uh, i don't know uh, why they picked on this movie specifically 
for being old, it's, it's gone too far and poor Ana de Armas and it's, it's depicting the worst. Of yeah. And you mentioned emotion. So one thing that I've noticed with all of these reviews is the critics focused on either specific scenes that really tugged at their heartstrings or made them feel some type of way. Right. But, you know, when it comes to film, film critiquing and film analysis, you can't let your emotions influence the entirety of your analysis because there's so many other elements involved in a film, right? It's not just, it's not only what emotions it gives you. It's also the casting, the, the artistic vision, the story, the writing, cinematography. the cinematography, the, the, the costumes, the production design, there's the score. There's so much that goes into a movie, you know, aside from the emotions. So, I mean, I think it's funny that Andrew, one of Dominic's most famous films uh, about Jesse James, which was praised for how visual and striking it was. No one questioned whether it was historically accurate. They right. just said it was beautiful and it was well crafted. And that has come now being shifted to kind of come at, let's ignore all this good stuff within the film and let's mm -hmm. focus. Oh, it's not historically right. accurate. Right, on the fact checking, right? We're just fact because, checking every little scene and, oh, you know, Marilyn didn't do that. It's like. Yeah, just because we know or know of Marilyn Monroe, right? And how much of an icon she was, we feel the need to immediately fact check the film. But the film isn't about check, fact checking. The it's film, not a documentary. Yeah, and, you know, and there was even a quote that said, you know, he didn't do this to showcase reality. Yeah, he's gone on record saying yeah. this is my version of reality. And yeah. You, you know, you have As to... with any artist, right? Yeah. So, I don't know. All right, guys. Thank you for watching I Am Married a Film Snob. And don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe. And uh, in the comments, leave any movies you'd like us to review. But next week, we're actually going to cover an A24 recent release film that might have flown on the radar, but I thought... We both thought actually it was surreal and pretty amazing and uh, for a mainstream film. So we're going to, I won't say which one, but we'll cover that next. Yeah. Time. So comment down below what you think that movie is. And, and the, the movie I was trying to figure out, well, okay, so. Yeah. What does this mean? Is it like, a different tone? Apparently is it... there's no meaning, yeah. which is fine. Well, yeah. Which is also beautiful. And, and that's great. That's again, part of the artistic.